Okay, so welcome to this next video in uh, the Calcium Signaling playlist, in which we are going to look at uh, the activation of T cells. And the reason this is in the Calcium Signaling playlist, rather than potentially my Inflammation and Angiogenesis playlist, um, is that there is some interesting calcium signaling that occurs in the process of the activation of T cells. Okay, so uh, let's begin with some professional antigen presenting cell, uh, such as a macrophage or a dendritic cell, which has migrated to the lymph nodes uh, and is presenting its antigen on uh, MHC class 2 uh, to our uh, T cell. So let's say what we have here this blob. Rep this represents our antigen presenting cell. And I've drawn it as a blob because it's easier to draw than, um, you know, as a sort of tentacled cell in the case of a dendritic cell. Um, this is sort of the general shape of a macrophage, but obviously dendritic cells, as I say, they would be more sort of like a tentacled cell. But it's, it, it just is more difficult to draw uh, this uh, interaction happening on a uh, tentacled cell than it is to um, draw it happening on a, a macrophage. So, um, but I've drawn the dendritic cell now, so I uh, might as well label it up. So this is a macrophage here, um, and uh, this is a dendritic cell, and together they are two of the major types of antigen-presenting cells. B cells are another type of antigen-presenting cell, and that becomes important in the activation of B cells. Uh, but usually the cell that first uh, alerts T cells to the problem uh, is at one of these two, a macrophage or dendritic cells. So these are uh, professional antigen-presenting cells then. So professional antigen-presenting cells, and people often abbreviate antigen-presenting cells to just APC. So professional antigen-presenting cell. Right, okay, so why are they called a professional antigen presenting cell or a professional APC? Well, it's because um, what they do is they phagocytose the invading pathogen and then they uh, basically chop it up, they break it down, and they take small fragments of uh, the uh, proteins from that pathogen and they put it on their cell surface. Um, and the way that they mount it on their cell surface is through a protein known as the major histocompatibility complex class 2. So let me show you this. So basically, this cartoon here is going to represent our major histocompatibility complex class 2. And this is basically how we uh, mount uh, antigen fragments on the surface of uh, antigen-presenting cells. We basically bind them to this major histocompatibility complex class 2. Or uh, often, because major histocompatibility complex class 2 is a bit of a mouthful, people abbreviate this to MHC2, like so. Right, okay, so um, here is our major histocompatibility complex class 2 on the surface of our macrophage. Now, let's say this macrophage has found some horrible pathogen uh, in the body, it's phagocytosed it, it has now got some antigen which it is has stuck in its MHC here, so let's say this is our antigen here, and basically what it's going to do is it's going to present that to a T-cell. So, uh, let's show a T-cell here, right, and it's going to be a little bit of a squash, uh, but here is our T-cell then. Okay, so the T-cell has a uh, receptor on its surface called a T-cell receptor. Okay, so this is this T-cell's T-cell receptor here. So I'll just label that up. This is our T-cell receptor. T-cell receptor. And basically, um, every T-cell in your body will have a slightly different T-cell receptor. So uh, there is a huge amount of variability in T cell receptors. So just like um, every different B cell will produce a different antibody, every different T cell might potentially have a different T cell receptor. I mean, you will have some T cells which have the identical T cell receptor, but most of the T cells in your body will have different T cell receptors. So the structure of this T cell receptor is going to 
differ slightly between the different T cells. Now, what this means is that different T cell receptors will bind to different antigens. So, um, Basically, what will happen is this macrophage with its antigen uh, mounted on this major histocompatibility complex class 2 molecule uh, will go around and it will search for a, a T cell which has the correct T cell receptor uh, such that the antigen with the MHC molecule can actually bind to that T cell receptor. Okay, so let's say this macrophage has found uh, that um, T cell which has the correct uh, T cell receptor to actually bind uh, to the major histocompatibility complex with this specific antigen in. Because of course every different pathogen is going to have different antigens, uh, so you need an uh, a T cell which has a T cell receptor complementary to that antigen that you are presenting basically. And this is why uh, the adaptive immune response is sometimes known as the specific immune response because it really is, we are recruiting a bunch of cells which have receptors which are basically primed against this specific antigen. So it's not just a it's not just a non-specific response against anything uh, that isn't um, supposed to be there. It's a very specific targeted response against this specific pathogen antigen that has managed to um, come into the body basically. Okay, right. So um, the T cell has another Pro, uh, protein on its cell surface which also has to bind to this MHC molecule. Now it is not specific to uh, the antigen basically. So this other molecule just binds to MHC and basically it only binds to major histocompatibility complex of the type 2. It doesn't bind to class 1 MHC and this molecule is known as uh, CD4 or cluster of differentiation 4. Okay, and it's a marker for T cells, basically. And I should just mention, T cells are also known as T lymphocytes because they, um, they lurk in lymph nodes. Okay, so T lymphocytes, T cells, they're the same thing. Right, okay, so, so far what has happened is our macrophage has phagocytosed this pathogen, it's chopped it up, it's taken the antigen, it's docked it on this major histocompatibility complex class 2, and it's searched and searched for a T-cell that has a T-cell receptor which is complementary to this antigen, basically. So a T-cell that has a T-cell receptor which can bind to the antigen, okay? And uh, the... T cell receptor binds both to the antigen and the MHC class 2 molecule, whereas CD4 is basically just there to make sure that uh, this is MHC class 2 and not MHC class 1, basically. So it just binds to the MHC, and it's not, it doesn't vary between T cells. CD4 is a constant protein, so it uh, doesn't, isn't specific to the antigen being presented. Okay, now, once that happens, this gives what is known as signal 1 to the cell. Okay, so this is signal 1 uh, to activate the T cell. Now, the T cell doesn't just activate because you've given it signal 1. It needs a whole bunch of signals to actually make it uh, undergo activation. And signal 1 is the first signal uh, to activate the T cell. Now, I have focused on macrophages because it's nice and easy to draw proteins sitting on the surface of the macrophage, whereas it's quite difficult to draw it on the surface of a dendritic cell. But dendritic cells also go through this process. They also go through the process of antigen presenting, which is why they're known as a professional antigen presenting cell. Right, okay, so now let's look at the next uh, process, the, well, the next signal that you need in order to activate uh, the T cell. So basically, uh, this isn't good enough as far as the T-cell is concerned. It needs to receive other signals from this macrophage in order to actually make it divide. Uh, well, in order to actually give it signal 2. Signal 2 actually even isn't enough to make it start dividing. We'll see what the final signal is. Um, but it needs to receive other signals from the macrophage, and we'll have a look at those in the next video.